candidate running for state representative in District 80. Casey, good morning to you. Oh, do, do we not have Casey? Let's see. It seems we got some interference. Casey, can you hear me? Ah, oh, there you are. There you are. I can hear All you right, now. Sorry. Bad uh, earbud. Hey, no no Step problem. Um, so, so tell us, Casey Copeland, I read your Facebook post. Um, I, I would just like for you to tell us what, what are the developments of this? Because it, it seems like you got a phone call from the incumbent current state representative, Charlene Fight, And, and what was to share with us the contents of that phone conversation? Well, let me first say, Paul, that this is, um, all very, <laughs> very unfortunate and, uh, and frankly, somewhat embarrassing for me to have to to have to do this and, and put all this out there not only you know about about myself but about the about the conversation that I had um, and it it could have totally been avoidable um, and it, it started with some some stuff out of the fight campaign that I, I believe was misleading um, on the on the issue of pro pro-life and then on the NRA endorsement issue um, that's when Mr. Fight decided to engage myself uh, on Facebook and, uh, you know, step into the arena and make arguments um, himself. And so, um, you know, as, as that, and you know how Facebook is, it's, it's kind of like a, a melee out there once you start talking about something. Yes. And um, <clears throat> some, some folks that are supporters of mine had post, made a couple of comments uh, on, on a post about Mr. Fight's past. And, uh, you know, this is not, none of this is secret. Uh, it's, it's something that went all the way up to the Supreme Court in uh, the Arkansas Supreme Court in 2010. It's, it's still out there on the Internet. I've, I've known about it from the beginning of, of this campaign. But, you know, Mr. Fight is not my opponent, and it's not something that I've um, made an issue in this, in this campaign. And I certainly did not prompt uh, those, those two posts. So basically, there were people who brought up uh, Charlene Fight's husband, Tom Fight, his past when it had to do with what? What was that? Was it something about Medicaid or something? It was a, a, a misdemeanor um, Medicaid bribery conviction way back in the eighties, and yeah. you know, it's forever ago. It it was already. And he's not uh, running. He's he's not he's running. Not running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it you know he he stepped into the arena, and and some, some folks thought. You know, it was relevant to point out, you know, if he's going to make political arguments with his wife's opponent, then, you know, he's he's out there. So mm -hmm. they did that, um, and then— And you, ha and you did evening, not direct them in any way to do that? Oh, absolutely not, no. Okay. And uh, later that evening, um, I, I got a call from a, an unknown number, and uh, <laughs> I don't answer those because they're usually, you know, telemarketers or insurance companies using local numbers, so— mm -hmm. I let it go to voicemail while I, I messed with the kids and got everybody homework done and in bed. And then I, uh, I listened to the message. It was Mrs. Fight. So I called her back and, um, she, you know, she told me that well, she first asked me to, to take down those two comments and uh, told me that she thought it was uh, you know inappropriate to, uh, to bring people's, you know, candidates, families into, into the race like that. And, you know, if, if that was all it was, I, I would agree with her. Yes, I don't think um, I, I do agree that family is, is off limits. If, if all a family member is doing is saying, you know, good job, Charlene, you're doing great. We, I support you. Everybody vote for my wife. You know, that's that's one thing. And um, but when you when you actually engage in the argument, um, that's another. When you step into that arena, that's another. Um, but she didn't stop there. And if she'd stopped there, I probably would have just taken them down and you know maybe wiped out all of the arguments between myself and Mr. Fight and everything. But she then decided to let me know that she knew about my DWI and that she'd known about it from for a while and, and hadn't used it in her campaign and uh, reiterated that she really thought I ought to take down the stuff about, about Tom. And it was, um, it was clear to me that the implication was that if, if, if I left those posts up there, she was going to, you know, put something out about about my past. Um, so I just, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I just, I headed it off. I'm not going to let, you know, a political opponent do that. I'm not going to leave myself vulnerable if, if I do happen to win this race, somebody else doing it later down the line. 
I'll just take the lumps now. Um, you know, something that happened long enough ago that I've had it sealed and it's it's it's, it's gone. So yeah. So talk about that. Um, this this event and you write that this happened back in 2009 that you made a terrible mistake. <clears throat> You know, you 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 paid your fine. You you know, you did the classes. You had your driver's license suspended. You went through all the process, everything else, and then it had been you know several years, and you you know asked the judge to hey, can you seal this? I don't want this on my record anymore. I I haven't you know I'm not a reoffender. I made a mistake one time, like lots of people do, and yep. and so how did she know about it if it was sealed? Oh, you know, I, it happened here in town. It's a small town. I've done. People, you know, people knew about it at the time, and people remember that. I'm sure somebody told her about it. Okay. Um, but So what we have here, it, to me, it just sounds like she, um, I mean, wants to, first of all, wants to win the race at all costs. I mean, this is kind of, I mean, I, I don't know if it meets the legal definition of blackmail, but I think to the average person it sounds like <coughs> this is an attempt to blackmail you to <laughs> take down some well, Facebook I, comments. I, well, I, I just, you know, to me, it's just, um, I don't know that I'd go that far. I, I just consider it to be just, I don't know, just a form of intimidation. Um, and it's 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 odd that, that it would happen because, you know, they've collected more than $45,000 in this race and spent more than 35000 and I can't even come close to that. So, like, it's just, it, it it's odd to me that they're that worried about, about my my race against her huh i mean if you just look at the money i mean yeah i don't, I don't know uh and maybe you know maybe i guess benefit the doubt maybe she just had a reaction to that and, and wanted to defend and protect her husband and uh you can i mean i guess in a way you can appreciate that you know you would do that for your wife i would do it for mine um but it just it seemed like a little i don't know un un professional unprepared you know uh i don't know how you characterize it but um, well unwise it, it, maybe it's taken <laughs> it just it it, it just kind of takes the race down to, down a path that you know no, yeah, and with all the yeah go ahead with all the stuff that that they that they have come out you know they she put out a mailer claiming to be the only true pro-life candidate and that's not true my web page has, has had my pro-life stance on it for months my mailers had it on there i've told everybody who's asked me um and then you know the nra sends out its endorsement cards which i got mine in the mail too and i when i got mine i thought oh you know oh well what can you do about that and then and then mr fight posts you know charlene got an a and her opponent got an f well he knows there's three of us in the race and and he knows he can be more specific if he wants to say which opponent got an f yeah so those sorts of things you know on are, are, are misleading and uh, it, it's you know my job as a candidate to point those things out and make sure the record is clear on the issues these aren't personal attacks on her um, these are issues in a case these are issues that are issues in a, a campaign and issues that matter to the voters in district 80 that that need to be clearly and honestly put out there yeah, and I, I just from my standpoint, I mean, if you're if you're a candidate uh, and and you're running, if you're an incumbent like Charlene Fight is, um, just be confident with your record. Be confident. Go go to the people with your message. Win the argument. To have to stoop to the point of threatening to bring up, you know, a sealed misdemeanor from years ago, uh, is it just? I mean, it d definitely shows that it's an act of desperation. I mean, I don't care if you're a Republican, Democrat, or whatever. I mean, to try to look at the situation objectively, that's exactly what it is. So um, it, I'm sorry for you, Casey. I, however you look yeah, at well, it. And I'm sorry. And honestly, you know, this is why people don't run for office. Uh, essentially, you know, Charlene Fight is a, a really just w with what she's done here um, is reinforcing why people are so jaded about politics. You know, they say you can't you can't run for politics. You can't run for office because, you know, all of this stuff's going to get dragged out, your private life, everything else. And uh, that's what, you know, she was threatening to do to you. And, and instead, you just said, you know what, I'm just going to tell everybody about the conversation, tell everybody about one mistake I made one time in 2009. And um, I think that was the good thing to do, Casey. I think that's the high road. And uh, I want to thank you for being honest with the state and being honest with the, the voters of District 80. Well, I appreciate it. And, and to me, it's just, you know these these whether it's 
local level, state level, national level, it seems like our politics are just getting away from actually talking about the issues. And it's, we're talking about, you know, people and, 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 you know, the mistakes they may have made and, and things that aren't really relevant to the issues of, of whether, you know, taxes are going up or down or government's growing or, or shrinking or, or what we're doing for this or that. So it, it's becoming it's becoming more of a junior high type uh, rumor mill mm-hmm. and, yeah. and not and not honest, open, intelligent discussions about issues. Well, yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, and just for my time being at the Marble Palace and, and covering the Marble Palace, it very much is like a, a junior high or high school uh, where you still have the, 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 the lunchroom uh, territorial disputes. So here's the here's the cool kids table here, you know, and, and everybody wants to be the popular one. And, and, and it's really, it doesn't need to be about that. It needs to be about the people it needs to be about the issues. And that takes a level of maturity. And sometimes, you know, sometimes our elected officials lack that level of maturity, you know, uh, and that, it, that doesn't, it, you know, age is not a factor in that at all. You know, you can be, you can be old and young, you know, and be mature, or immature. So Casey Copeland, libertarian candidate, uh, sir, I'll give you the last word. Thanks for coming on this morning. Well, thank you, Paul. I really appreciate the time. Again, this this is just a very unfortunate um, event for this campaign and for for this this part of the state and the whole state. Um, I've always been about small farms, small businesses, and small towns, and that's what I'm going to try to continue to focus on. But I am going to make sure that I that the record is straight out there on on all the issues. I think that something's misleading. It's I think it's my job as the candidate to point them out. But in the end, I will work for the people of District 80 as best I can uh, if they're going to elect me. All right, Casey, thanks so much, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. Uh, All right, folks, we're going to take a break. Reset here. Be back in just a moment.